basics related to the waves and everything okay in the last class so let's continue with this last class what have you done can anybody tell me yes any one of you ibrahim armina yamna hello hello okay we have done some basic things regard relating to the waves actually what is waves and how many kinds of wave we have it and we have discussed transfer waves also we have discussed mechanical wave electromagnetic waves can anybody tell me what is meant by mechanical wave so mechanical waves require a medium and uh, like uh, an example of magnet uh, mechanical waves would be um uh, sound waves sound waves water waves whatever waves you are saying and electromagnetic waves do not need medium to travel best example is light waves then as far as shape is concerned i have told you there are, the wave name is transfer waves another wave name is longitudinal wave we have done transfer waves i have told you the shape of a transfer wave is like this okay so how do you explain transfer wave any one of you what is transfer waves yes anyone transfer waves armina you or yamna or ibrahim any one of you sir on um, transfer waves um in transfer waves particles travel perpendicular to the direction of the wave they are moving perpendicular to the direction of the motion of the wave right like in here yeah between the waves between yeah, the waves de definitely but, but you don't call it between the waves say perpendicular to the direction of the motion of the wave so direction of the motion is from left to right so perpendicular motion is up and down like that so it's perpendicular and we have seen some definitions related to that which is crust and trough what is crust and what is trough yes what is crust yes armina you tell me what is crust yes or yamna you any one of you what is crust and trough yes hello armina asjad yamna crust is the upper part from the mean position trough is the lower part of the mean from the mean position in a wave what about time period anyone amount of time needed to complete a wave one complete wave absolutely right and that is in seconds what about frequency anyone armina and yamna ashad ibrahim is the one who is continuously answering any one of you who wants to uh frequency is like the number of waves per second okay waves passing per unit time is called as okay so very simple now very interesting fact is the unit for the frequency is 1 upon second or in other words second inverse which we called as hertz right what about wavelength
Yes. What is wavelength? Any one of you? Wavelength. No one knows? Wavelength is basically Wavelength is the distance between two consecutive crusts or two consecutive troughs. Like for example, if this is your wave, then the distance between two consecutive crusts is lambda. And this is what the wave definition is. Wave definition is the distance between two consecutive crusts or two consecutive troughs. All right. So what do you mean by consecutive? Consecutive means, what? just let me explain that. This is a very good question, actually. Consecutive means right one after another. Like I'll, if you, I draw that wave, if you see this wave here, which I will inshallah draw it, this is a wave which I draw. Check it out. These two crusts are consecutive. What about these, this crust and this crust? Are they consecutive, Ibrahim? No. The first, no. Consecutive means right one after another. That's the reason we use the word, word distance between two consecutive crusts or distance between two consecutive troughs. Because if you do not say that, then it can be a distance between this crust and this crust, that will be wrong. So distance between two consecutive crusts or distance between two consecutive troughs like that. And it is represented by lambda. So what is the definition of wavelength? The distance between two consecutive crusts or two consecutive troughs. Okay? Now we have done everything. Now displacement. What is displacement? Yes. What is displacement in wave? Crust and trough one, we represent it by lambda, unit is meter. What is displacement in the wave? All the particles which are traveling like this one, this one, this one, this one, every particle is having a vertical motion or you can say having a vertical distance with respect to this position, which I already discussed this position is called as main position or we called it equilibrium position. That vertical distance is called as displacement. So I can say vertical distance of the particle of the wave from the mean position or rest position or equilibrium position. What about amplitude? Amplitude will be the maximum displacement from the mean position. Like those particles which are here or here or here, if I consider their displacement, that will be the amplitude. So amplitude is what? Maximum displacement of the particle of the medium, a particle of the wave 
फ्रॉम दी मेन पोजिशन और रेस्ट पोजिशन और इक्विलिब्रियम पोजिशन दिस इज वॉट वी कॉल्ड एज एम्पलीट्यूड these are the terms we will be discussing for the longitudinal wave as well now longitudinal wave first of all how does it look like now i'll show you a picture so that you will understand what kind of waves are these waves in the spring now check this out can you see a wave here when you stretch it and you leave the wave at its place you will find it at some places the particles are very close to each other at some places the particles are far at some places the particle are close at some places the particle are far at some places the particles are very close my question to every one of you is you tell me how these particles are moving previously particles are moving perpendicular to the direction of the wave in this case how the particles are moving perpendicular to the direction of wave or parallel to the direction of the wave yes anyone hello it's parallel because here they are not moving perpendicular but parallel to the direction of the motion so that is a difference here how do we show that wave in general we show the wave like this here the particles are very nearby then there is a gap where particles are far then nearby then far then nearby then far then nearby so if you see that particles are moving parallel to the direction of the motion of the wave so we can say in this wave in this wave particles are moving parallel to the direction of the motion of the wave so in that case the particle movement will be parallel to the direction of the motion of the wave that is what we called as a longitudinal wave now another very big difference between this wave and the top wave is example first of all the example for that wave is our sound wave or spring waves now the next point is if you see that previously in transfer wave we will have crust and trough which are formed here here we got two regions one in which particle of the medium are, are very close and one in which particle of the medium are far away the region where particle of the medium are very close to each other we called it compression and a wave in which particle of the medium are far away from each other we called it rarefaction so basically in these waves you will have our net wide spindle so basically okay so now basically what happened here the particle of the mediums 
are moving in such a way that they are perpend uh, they are parallel to the wave motion now one more important thing instead of crust and trough we will have compression and rare fractions are formed now what do you think a compression is anyone yes but Are molecules we... have less space to move yes you can say but the how to explain that a region in which particle of the medium are close to each other and rare fractions are what is rare fraction a region in which particle of the medium are far away to each other that is called rare fraction now in that case we will have again a time period but this time it's the same thing but we use instead of wave we use some other thing time required to complete one complete vibration or oscillation you can call it wave as well but it's better to use these words time required to complete one vibration or oscillation the time will be given in the form of seconds right now frequency will be what frequency in that case will be number of vibrations passing in one second passing in one second the unit is same hertz okay frequency sorted time is done now wavelength previously wavelength was the distance between two consecutive crusts and two consecutive troughs here the distance between two consecutive compressions or rare fraction this is what we called as wavelength in this case everyone understand that any questions in case of longitudinal wave every would understand everyone hello sir yes yes i can hear you uh, sir can you can you talk to me sir your voice is lagging armin can you say it again sir can you show how to maintain the voice can you write it i can't hear you properly okay 
it's just lagging very bad i think your internet service provider is not good or not today your reception is no good just write it down what you want to say yes armin write it okay anybody has have any question related to this ibrahim yumna ashad okay. it means everyone knows it now if you know that okay 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 very good question actually what arvin asked that how do we actually measure the wavelength very good question now check this out let's suppose this is your wave it will be like this for example this is your crust or uh, not crust i mean this is your compression and the successive or you can say consecutive compression is this so distance between two compression will be your wavelength or as far as if this one is concerned rare fraction then distance between two consecutive rare fraction will be your lambda so you will actually measure the distance between either two consecutive compressions or do consecutive rare fractions yes armina sorted understood yes armina okay now once you understand everything now let's quickly see the difference between transfer waves and longitudinal wave transfer waves on the left hand side longitudinal wave on the right hand side first difference any one of you please what is transfer wave the first difference between longitudinal wave and transfer waves yes uh, the particles are perpendicular to the motion of the wave direction Parti of the wave particles are not perpendicular particles are moving so everything is right okay. except particles are particles are moving in the direction perpendicular to the wave motion and in longitudinal they are moving parallel so i am writing in a very press i mean uh, shortcutly you have to write a full definition here the particles are moving perpendicular here the particles are moving parallel that's the first difference second difference is the waveform here the waves are like this third can be the example can anybody tell me what is the example of transfer waves ibrahim yumna ashad armina yes anyone the best example is for this one is water wave or you can have light wave so transfer waves example is light waves or water waves on the other side you can have example as waves produced in the spring and the second example is sound waves fourth example i mean fourth difference anybody in transfer waves crust and troughs are formed while on the other side compression and 
रेयर फैक्शंस आर फॉर्म्ड फिफ्थ डिफरेंस वेवलेंथ इज द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन कॉन्जेक्यूटिव crusts or trough while here wavelength is the distance between consecutive compression or rare factions these are the five major differences between transfer waves and longitudinal sir waves. can you explain the second difference second difference is just a wave i just draw a wave one wave is this the other wave you are showing the particles here some particles which are nearby and then particles are far then nearby then far then nearby then far third one is the examples of that fourth one is the crust and trough one because in transfer waves crust and trough are formed while on the other side it's compression and rare fractions are formed then the next one is wavelength which is distance between two consecutive crusts or troughs and on the other side it will be wavelength is a distance between consecutive compressions or rare fractions anyone have any question related to transfer waves and longitudinal wave please ask no questions either give me a thumbs up or give me yes sir so that i will know that you understand everything I understand. Good. What about you, Ashjat and Armina? Okay, Armina, what about you? But if your mic is not working, you can thumbs me up. I mean, you send me a thumbs up, something. Yes. Okay. now important thing once you go into the detail of this further we will go for electromagnetic radiations what are those and what exactly is what i will send you a document as well which will help you but first let's start working with that what is electro magnetic radiations or electromagnetic waves we have already discussed that these are the radiations or waves which do not need which do not need medium to travel okay so they do not need medium to travel we already seen that now i want to show you something very interesting now this is what i wanted to show you is when you are talking about electromagnetic radiations electromagnetic radiations are basically the light but remember that these light waves not all the light rays are visible to you there are some light rays which you, which you can't see or we cannot see we normally called it light but these are basically electromagnetic waves and we have some electromagnetic ray i mean waves along with their frequencies and their wavelengths and we divided them as per their increasing wavelength or reducing wavelengths or you can say increasing frequencies or reducing frequencies 
when all the different type of frequencies or waves are at one place we call this as electromagnetic spectrum so the main grouping of the continuous electromagnetic spectrum are there are so many waves we have it but there are some special or spe i mean uh, particular names of the waves which we will be using at least we know for the time being in this i uh, mean your igcse or gcse syllabus the names of the waves are radioactive waves microwave infrared visible light ultraviolet and x rays and gamma rays now what are these waves these are the waves which are a part of electromagnetic radiations which do not need medium to travel in general when you are talking about you are talking about these are basically some sort of light out of which radio waves microwave infrared ultraviolet x rays and gamma rays are you we can't see them but we only see the visible part visible part means red orange yellow green blue and indigo and violent color that's it rest of the colors or rest of the light we can't see okay now interesting fact how do we differentiate them i'll show you here now check it out if you see from left to right from left to right if you see them frequency is in actually reducing this got the highest frequent uh, you can say the lowest frequency then frequency increasing 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 and increasing and increasing so technically speaking on the leftmost side you have a wave having the least frequency and the highest wavelength so radio wave microwave infrared visible light ultraviolet x rays and gamma rays from left to right our frequency is increasing frequency increasing and wavelength reducing so radio wave got the least frequency gamma rays got the most or the highest frequency as far as wavelength is concerned radio waves have the most of the wavelength or you can say longest wavelength while gamma rays got the shortest wavelength okay so now let's see the job of each particular wave we are watching it here what this radio wave is doing or what this different waves are doing in this the highest frequency the highest energy of the radiation now remember this this is very important the highest frequency is means as a gamma rays so gamma rays is the highest frequency and you can say it has the highest energy in that radiation with the highest energy is highly ionizing harmful to cell and tissue causing cancer now remember that especially i am talking about the gamma whether uh, but you remember that x rays and ultraviolet are also a part of it but gamma are the most they are very dangerous and ionizing ionizing means they can like i will explain this ionization word later on when once we do the radiation ibrahim did we finish the radiation by the way i forgot radioactivity did we finish that or we still not did it uh, i don't think we didn't I, i don't think we did it okay no problem because that word will be used over there and i will explain you what exactly is ionizing but for the time being just remember that gamma rays can cause cancer and this i mean these rays are used to do the uh, cancer therapy as well and we call this chemotherapy so this is very harmful for the tissues of the body as well but at the same time if we use it with care we can use it to actually curing the cancer patient as well okay so gamma rays are the most penetrating wave but still they can be used for the gamma uh, cancer treatment but as a harmful side 
they are also causing the cancer as well. Now, the most limited one or very less energy one are called as the one having the least frequency. We called it radio waves. Remember that these waves which are the radio wave are less harmful for the humans and we use them for the communication purposes. You know, satellite communication, data communication. My question is, why don't we use the penetrating wave or you can say the most highest frequency wave for uh, communication. Why do we use a wave which is the least frequency one or highest high, uh, highest wavelength one? Do you have anything in your mind? Why don't we use ultraviolet waves for communication or X-rays or gamma rays for communication? Other than they sure, are dangerous. Because they, um, they're too narrow. Actually, the thing is that remember that in our, you know, the, our countries, our cities, they are not empty. We got big buildings everywhere. There are obstacles, right? So if you use the most highly high frequency waves, then it may not work and it may stop. The reason is they will find obstacle and they will be, I mean, there will be obstruction. So they can't bypass those uh, obstacles. But radio wave being the highest wavelength, they may pass those obstacles. That is the reason. We used communication for the communication purposes. We use this radio wave or microwave. By the way, there may be a second most important reason is gamma, X-rays and ultraviolet rays are very, very dangerous waves. So we will not actually want that our humans and we are exposed to too much of these waves. Because if we expose our bodies for so much time for these waves, it may cause humans to cancer or sometime if not that much. It may cause etching to the body of humans or it may burn the, you know, burns, we may produce burns at the skin of the humans as well. Okay. Anyone have any question till now? No one? Okay. Now the next. Properties. The electromagnetic spectrum is usually given in order of decreasing wavelength or increasing wavelength. We already talked about this. Now, first of all, important thing is this is transfer waves. Energy transfer from source of a wave to an absorber. An electromagnetic wave shares the following properties. They are all transfers. They can all travel through the vacuum. And they are all having the same speed because they are moving with the speed of light. Now, another very important thing, which the document I will be sharing with you as well. That document is actually related to electromagnetic uses and the waves. Everyone can see that? Yes. Okay. If you see that, this document will share with you the uses of each and every wave. Okay. So let's discuss them one by one. It's from longest wavelength to the shortest wavelength. Right? First thing first. On that side, you can see that energy of the radio wave is the lowest energy. Frequency is the lowest. Wavelength is the longest. And this is used for the communication such as television and radio and mobile phone and radar and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Next wave is again microwave. They got less energy than the radio and they are used for cooking. And they are also used for the satellite communication purposes as well, as well as for the camera communication as well. So radio and microwave are used for the communication purposes. Next one is infrared. Infrared ray is again because we are going from left to right. So our wavelength is reducing and frequency increasing. So this infrared is used for the heat transfer by the radiation, electric heaters, cooking by grilling, also night vision equipment, 
optical fiber communication tv remote controls and bulgal alarms so we are using this for each and every purpose then we have it a visible light which we can see this is for the purpose of seeing photography optical fiber communication okay now as we proceed further we will find out that we will have very much penetrating or you can say a high frequency wave we have it here so ultraviolet waves are used for what suntan detect detecting forged pinking notes helping to make vitamin d hardening some types of dental fillings night clubs and bowling alloys to make clothes glow so ultraviolet are basically used for that purpose then we have x rays these are one of the most uh, highly high frequencies or you can say having those frequencies i mean those waves having one of the most high frequencies after that we got the highest one by the way x rays are used for medical imaging of bones airport baggages and for the scanner purposes remember that we use x rays for the purpose of body imaging but remember that we do not want our patient to be exposed to x rays for a very long period of time because if you expose person to a very long period of time that will be very much dangerous because x rays for a very long period of time will not be i mean it's it will be harmful for a humans because they are very much penetrating waves or you can say one of the high frequency waves afterwards you will have it gamma rays and what the gamma rays is okay so basically gamma rays now these are the most penetrating test now what is it it is used to to kill cancer cells sterilizing sterilizing medical equipments killing bacteria to prolong shelf life of the fruits so gamma rays are the most penetrating waves all right so these are the reasons these are the causes why these are used for now applications once again a quick view radio waves can be used in tv and radio as name suggests we use radio waves in tv and in radio communication waves with shorter wavelength will carry more information than waves with a longer wavelength so it means that these wave are these these, these wave wavelength are not carrying any information that is the reason we use this in i mean this one microwaves are used in cooking and communication microwaves are similar radio waves in the way that they are both using some kind of communication microwave tends to be sent from earth to satellite that are in space this is useful as it allows us to have spoon and tv signals infrared is used in heating cooking and cameras infrared radiation is to do with heat as this case infrared radiation is very useful in cooking and it can helpful with the heating up food infrared radiation is also useful in home security systems and since it can be used in cameras these cameras are able to detect body heat which can trigger an alarm if an intruder enters now visible light visible light is used in communication visible light is also used in communication like radio waves and microwave they are often used in fiber optic waves since they can carry lots of more information than microwaves and radio waves this because the waves of the visible light is even shorter than that of wavelength and radio waves as we mentioned before the shortest the wavelength the more information a wave can carry then we have ultraviolet ultraviolet waves are used in lamps and tannings and we can mentioning ultraviolet radiation before in the context of harmful effect of radiation we know that uf uv waves 
radiations are can damage human tissues and can cause cancer but they are used in uv lamps and tanning beds as useful source of radiations next is x and gamma rays first of all x rays and gamma rays are used for imaging finally x rays and gamma rays can be used for imaging and they are commonly used in medical field in order to get a better view inside the human body for example if someone breaks their leg a doctor can try a x ray to view the broken bone all right now the point is there is a danger which is written over here all the document is here i am sharing this document right now with you people you can have this document 